Hi, this is Sarah Lacey and welcome to TechCrunch TV. I am joined by Bill Bishop, who is an independent investor and consultant in China. Bill, you are near the epicenter of the Chinese internet. Are you just getting contact rich right now from all these IPOs? Uh, I wish, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of money out there, but it's, it's actually hard to make over here. Um, but it has been a crazy uh, couple months, and it's going to be crazier at least through Christmas, if not before. I think it's uh, it's the the gold rush is back. Well, so it's so hard for us to get a handle on what's happening with IPOs in China because there's you know a couple sites that we know about here, and it just seems like in the last week a lot of the ones that I've met with have all priced. And so is that a sign that I'm just great at picking startups, or is everyone just rushing out now? I mean, has it just exploded over the last two weeks, or? Has this been well, going no, you're, on a while? You're, you're good at picking startups. There's no question. <laughs> um, and and, and, and you know, there are, you know, it's a hard, any, running, building business anywhere is tough. And so there are uh, uh, a lot of companies, excuse me, that aren't um, uh, doing so well. But but these guys are, most of them have built real companies. Some are actually quite profitable. And the IPO market, the window is wide open. And so you're now seeing companies that actually aren't even profitable getting out. And it seems like the there's an endless appetite in the U.S. market for, for some of these stocks. It's a great story right now. Yeah, well, we're certainly not having a lot of IPOs here. And I think what's so interesting is culturally in the U.S., people just don't want to take their companies public, even if they can. Whereas in China, you know, there's not as mature of an M&A market. There's more, I think, of um, a desire to take companies public and kind of have that IPO moment that we used to love but sort of no longer do. Right. Well, as you know, taking your company public is a great marketing event. Uh, in China, there's also a real... Um, it's, it's a point of pride to be able to say you listed in the U.S. I think what you're also seeing, as you mentioned, you know, there, there isn't much of an MA market here. It's actually quite binary for a lot of startups. It's either you go all the way or, or you, you basically shut down or become zombified. Because the big Chinese companies, even though they, many of them have a billion dollars or more on their balance sheets, don't like to buy. Mm -hmm. um, but what you're also seeing, I think, is uh, you're into the fifth or sixth year of some of these funds, especially some of the Silicon Valley funds that have come into China. And so there's a lot of pressure from the partners and from the you know from the limiteds to get these companies you know get some get some liquidity and so it all has come together into what is a, a extremely forgiving and welcoming market and so the timing yeah, it's 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 this, the timing is it's it's quite amazing how good the timing has has become so let's talk about the difference between Yoku and Tudo, the two sort of, for lack of a better phrase, YouTubes of China. Both are in the process of going public. Does it matter which one of them gets out first? Which one is going to get out first? Uh, well, it absolutely matters who gets out first. I mean, just just for a little bit of disclosure, there there actually already is a publicly listed Chinese online video company called uh, uh, Ku Six K U Six. The ticker is K U T V, and I happen to own about a thousand shares so uh, mm -hmm. not a big conflict but uh, and I bought them because I, I, I knew that these guys were going to go public and I thought that they might draft uh, up as investors like the story <laughs> um, so so when you look at the market here Yoku is the leader both in terms of revenue and users but there is no uh, standout dominant player like uh, like YouTube I mean they're the, Yoku and Tudo are the top two there are another four or five behind them, including uh, Baidu's new entrant called Xi, which is funded by Baidu and Providence Equity Partners, which is behind uh, Hulu, and mm -hmm. which is uh, already at 86 million users, they claim, and, and pretty good revenue. Uh, if you look at the numbers, you know, the, these two, it's a very capital intensive business. Combined, Yoku and Tudo have already raised about $300 million pre IPO. They're trying to raise another close to $300 million combined in the IPOs, uh, and they're barely profitable. So I think that um, it's they need to get public because it's not clear that the private market's going to keep funding them. And the question is going to be, is there enough appetite among investors in the U.S. to buy both? Mm -hmm. or, or are they going to go for whoever's first and then the, the second one's going to be left sort of stranded until things get even better in the market. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the issue since a lot of these guys are going public on U.S. exchanges. You know, American investors like the China story, want to buy part of the China story, but they like this shorthand of, you know, the Google of China, the Yahoo of China, the eBay of China, et cetera. Suddenly you have two companies coming out who are going to claim, in shorthand, they're the YouTube of China. How are investors going to differentiate between these two? Because. I mean, they. I know you say Yoku's a bit ahead, but they have pretty similar user numbers, don't they? Well, 
Well, well, Yoku's a bit a bit ahead um, in terms of user numbers, but actually they're they're fairly equal in revenue. And Tudo is most likely going to actually show a profit in Q4, whereas Yoku is has actually been burning a lot more money. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at sort of the shorthand, you know, explain to American investors what these companies are. Actually, the the more I think the more appropriate comp at this point is to say they're the Hulu's of China, because mm -hmm. what's happening is. It's very hard to monetize user-generated content, as is, you know, YouTube. A lot of people found out what what these guys do is they are now aggressively licensing uh, professionally produced content, mostly Chinese, but also Korean, Japanese, and you know, even Hong Kong, Taiwan, and some some U.S. content. Um, and then they're it's free. They're selling advertising against it, like the like the Hulu model. The differentiation question is very interesting because. The content, it's, it's really the golden age. The, the people who are really making money right now on video are the bandwidth providers like China Telecom and China Unicom and the, the, the content rights holders, the film production companies, because mm -hmm. uh, these guys, the, all the, the Yoku, the Tudos, the, the Chi's, the competitors, all have to buy content. Piracy for Chinese content is actually, um, uh, the problem isn't resolved, but it's actually much uh, much more favorable for content for rights holders now than it was even a year ago. So. But the rights holders generally don't do exclusives. Say so they won't just sell my. I won't just sell my program to Yoku. I'm going to sell it to whoever's willing to pay. Mm -hmm. And so the question of differentiation is is actually quite interesting, and it isn't really clear who is you know how you keep your users loyal. And and so I think that's one of the reasons why you see the fact that the market is actually quite fragmented. And while Yoku may have a greater share in terms of users, uh, there are four or five competitors who are who are not too far behind and um, when you look at the advertising line, I mean, Tudo actually, I mean, go, a lot of credit to, to Gary Wong and Tudo for um, running a very tight ship. A lot of credit to Victor Ku at Yoku because these guys are the leaders, the private company leaders of um, in an industry where, you know, three or four years ago, there were a couple dozen or more of these companies well funded. It's not easy to be. And a lot are. of them got shut down. I mean, people love to say, oh, China just wants to shut down all the Valley companies so they can prop up their own. A lot of Chinese online video companies. Oh. Got, it had been a huge, a huge crackdown. A lot, a lot of people got crushed by regulation. Um, you know, two years ago or two and a half years ago, it was it, you know, five six dot com was neck and neck with these guys, and um, they're actually they have some value money. I think Sequoia China is mm -hmm. an investor, and they got shut down for seven weeks. And Disney, Other, I believe here, too. I think oh, Steamboat, yeah, Steamboat, well. Steamboat, yeah. Steamboat's an investor. Um, and then if you look at, uh, but also plenty of just Chinese companies have run afoul. There's a whole new licensing regime. You know, I think where. Where it comes out, though, is is these guys have run the fastest. They've raised the most capital. Uh, they have built, you know, both Gary Wong and, and Victor Ku have built very good sales forces at their companies. So they have a, you know, they 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 are really they're starting to get traction with the advertisers. And I think they're they're they are ahead of their competitors. Longer term, though, it does go back to the question of well, how do you how do you differentiate? And mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that's interesting is if you look at Baidu and their their JV with with Providence Equity Partners for. Hulu is that's a terrific site. They don't bother with UGC content. It's purely mm -hmm. professional content. There are already 86 million users. They claim uh, they have revenue. It's a it's a wonderful experience. The, the, it's and you know what's interesting. What Baidu does is Baidu still you know they have 70 percent of the search market right. And a lot of people search for videos. They search for videos through Baidu and then click over to Yoku or Tudo or these well, other. Well, companies. I know when I was talking to Gary and Victor the last time I was in China. I mean, the single biggest thing they were worried about was Baidu because it has started. I mean, you have 400 million people online. You have mainly one big search engine. Google pulling out of the market had a really big effect. It's now gotten so expensive to buy up things on How123. It seems like distribution and getting traffic and getting your part of that fire hose is just getting harder and harder and more and more expensive in China. And if Baidu has that already in house, Right, and, and so far Baidu is not discriminating in terms of they're going to shut down Yoku or shut down Tudo or decide to charge for links. But one of the things they, they they disclosed in a press conference yesterday, which they're doing, which is very interesting, is uh, every week Baidu will send a report to Qi of the most searched TV shows, movies, etc., and then Qi uses that to inform their purchasing decisions as to what what content they go out and license. Mm -hmm. And so Qi has a very you know has an inside advantage in terms of really understanding what Chinese users want, and that effect may end up making them more efficient and you know not waste too much money on buying buying properties that maybe users don't want. Mm -hmm. The other thing though that that Victor that that uh, Yoku and Tudor are both trying to do, where they're really trying to I think they see is potentially their real point of differentiation is they are now funding in-house right. Uh, 
production. So they're doing their own TV shows. They're trying to build, build their own series, trying to make you know these web hits that ultimately only they have. And then I guess if they get big enough, they'll try and actually license, sub-license to other people. What's the, what, what is going on with the video ad market? How robust is it? I mean, if these guys are all dividing up a pie, how big is that pie? Well, the online market is, is growing quite quickly. It's still small. Uh, best estimates are somewhere for 2010, somewhere maybe maybe $150, $200 million. And you, you got to remember they're competing, you know, Yoku, Tudo, they're not only competing with the other video, private video sites, they're also competing with uh, Sina and Tencent, uh, Sohu. Um, uh, Sina had $80 million and $81 million in ad revenue in Q3 and, and you know, probably 10 plus, best we can tell from the reports, came from video advertising. Uh, but but the real video dollars or advertising dollars are still spent on TV mm -hmm. and still spent on the state broadcasters, CCTV. CCTV just did its upfront, I think, a week ago, and the upfront for 2011 pulled in uh, almost 13 billion RMB, so like a billion eight US dollars. Wow. And so at this point, online video is still you know a rounding error for CCTV, although they know it's coming. They've set up their own online operation. And, and going forward, I think, where the biggest potential risk for all these private online video sites is going to come from is when CCTV, which is not only state-owned but actually reports into the Communist Party directly, um, starts seeing material bits of their revenue being sucked off to these private sites. And then, you know, they're not just pissing off a commercial rival, they're also they're pissing off a commercial and a political uh, or regulatory rival, and that, that might get kind of interesting for these companies. Yeah, I understand that's bad in China, pissing off the government. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, several years ago, like eight to 10 years ago, tons of Valley VCs came to China. It was one of the first times any of these venture capital firms had ever invested outside the United States. And, you know, that's not an easy transition. Uh, but uh, as recently as five, you know, as, as recently as actually a few years ago, maybe halfway through their fund, these guys are really struggling to show returns. Um, based on the activity in the last couple of weeks, what firms are the biggest winners? And who else do you expect to price as well? Uh, right now, I would say that Sequoia China and Neil Shun are, are, are really the biggest winners. They've had uh, several exits in the U.S. in the last couple months. Uh, Maycox Lane, La Gaga, um, they, they've got a couple more in the pipeline. They've exited in, in Hong Kong. Uh, DCM uh, is doing extremely well here. Uh, they just had an exit two days ago with Bit Auto, which is a um, sort of the leading auto site in China. And um, uh, you, they, they just... Uh, had Dong Dong file, which is their uh, sort of one of the Amazons of China. Uh, I think uh, Tiger Global is doing pretty well here. They had an exit with an education company a few weeks ago, and then they own 25% of um, of Dong Dong. Back to the video. I mean, one of the Sequoia companies that just that the, the confidential filing just appeared on the SEC site. It's called the uh, Bona Film Group, Poly Bona, and it's the the leading independent film distribution company in China, and it's heavily invested by. Uh, Sequoia. Mm -hmm. um, and then the company that also has done a lot of, in the past, did a lot of co-investing with Sequoia is uh, SIG mm -hmm. Investments. And so they're, they seem to be in, in pretty much all the Sequoia deals. So I think they're having quite a good, uh, quite a good fall as well. I mean, it, it's, really, it's really harvest time for these guys. And I think, uh, as you, you had a very good article a couple of days ago, I think you pointed out that, that these, these funds probably, probably are going to surpass the, the, the U.S. funds in terms of the returns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think also Redpoint was saying they had one that had filed and another one that's about to price. Um, I think uh, there, was, there was someone else who had someone recent. I mean, Chi Chi Ming's got had a couple exits and seems to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it seems like most of the firms that, that went there early enough you know, they've got someone in the pipeline. Maybe they don't have five, but they have one, which is, you know, certainly more than they have in the United States, even if the values are different. Yeah, no, it's a, quite a different from even a year ago where I think people were really, you know, the markets didn't look good. And then again, I mean, we, I went through this when we took MarketWatch public in, in 99. I mean, we, we filed in 98 and we were, we were drafting when long-term capital blew up and, you know, the world ended and the markets closed. And then, you know, six weeks later, the globe came on and, God bless the globe. It just opened the floodgates, and that lasted for a while. And so right now, I think we're in one of those moments where you're seeing um, basically, you know, anything that looks looks has a good story behind it, even if you're not profitable, can get out. And you know, that's that's pretty, that's great if you're an investor. If you're an early investor, um, we'll see how long that lasts. But for the time being, everybody, you know, these guys are the, the VCs who are in these companies are just looking absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in addition to that, you create more role models for kids to think, oh, I can go be an entrepreneur. I mean, that's one of the most powerful things with IPOs that's, you know, really been an issue with there not being big internet companies in India, in Brazil, you know, other than DST and Russia and some of these other big markets. Yeah.
So it's uh, you know it, we'll, we'll see, but I think uh, I think for the time being, it's you know things. These are real companies. The, the revenues are real. Is and uh, it's uh, congratulations to these entrepreneurs. I mean, it's it's not easy building a company here, and and these guys are really really uh, done a great job. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you so much, Bill, for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.